In today's episode, I put a frog on a big foot, I try to open my jacket, and I try to say something meaningful. So, so, welcome to one week off. My name is Sebastian, I'm 34 years old, I try to be a singer, a pilot, and I'm totally obsessed with frogs. I wrote a book about a frog, I have a shirt with a frog, and I wrote a screenplay about a frog and his best friend, a vegetarian stork, having the adventure of their lives in New York. And like my characters, I never have been there. So I decided to take one week off, leave the stork in Germany, grab my frog and experience everything myself. And because I'm not known for something you would call good travel preparation, I sent this message to a real New Yorker. And guess what? She helped me. And I also wanted to talk to people who have to say something about their passion and their dreams. Never give up. Keep trying. You never know. You could have the worst year and one day everything could change. Is there regret? Yes. It, the, sh the short answer, yes. The long answer is, you know, there, there's no one way to describe it. Um, maybe I will change my direction of my career to movie filmmaking. So I made it. I finally arrived in Queens, New York City. And like my characters, I experienced to have no money and no internet at all. Thankfully, there was this nice bus driver who didn't charge me anything and even gave me a free transfer ticket for another bus ride. So, law of attraction at its best. My characters, Gary the Frog and Larry the Stork, arrive without any plan in the city. And somehow they manage to get on TV. This looks backstage like this. And on local TV like that. It'd be with us on a chilly Wednesday morning. And you know, we always, always appreciate when you say hi to us on Twitter and Insta. So do us a favor, send us a shout out, use that hashtag MyTodayPlaza. We want you in our open. Yes. Don't yeah. you think? Right. And of course, there's much more to see. Welcome. <laughs> this famous desk. This famous chair. Doesn't light up. Which is handy when your script is about a casting show. So I'm here in front of Radio City Music Hall and I'm waiting for my tour to start. 
I'm just done uh, with my tour at NBC and they gave me this. This sounds really cool. Late night with Seth Meyers, monologue rehearsal. I don't really know what it is, but yeah, see you later. And I just realized that I still have this badge from NBC and I forgot to give it back. So yeah, it's fun too. <laughs> see you later. shows are set up to Radio City Music Hall, which is an incredible venue with an unbelievable stage. There is even a chimney and a secret tunnel to the ice skating rink. This helps a lot when your characters plan to escape. So I, I have an update on this, um, they didn't let me in because uh, I have a backpack and uh, I couldn't store it because the tour at Radio City Music Hall was a bit too long so they said it's okay to put a backpack into the plastic bag so I, I came up with this uh, which is technically a, a plastic bag but um, the issue is that it doesn't have handles so uh, what I did is um, I went to the security guy and well he didn't let me in and then I threw my backpack away with my yeah, my plastic bag uh, and I returned and they said they have policies and they prevent me from entering the show so they even have a policy for people who throw the backpacks away so it didn't work. Time to ring up home. Three dollars down the train.
Uh, medium is good. Where are you from? Germany. Oh my god. And you? Egyptian. New York. Yeah. Okay. Two years. Two years, okay. Yeah. Time? First time in New York, yeah. Oh, bless, bless. Thank you. Bless. That's great. Thank you very much, it was amazing. Last stop to check out for my script. Have a look at this. It reminds me why everybody should have one week off. Time is ticking away. Use it, you never know. That was creative, wasn't it? When it comes to creativity, there's one brand. But am I truly creative or did I just buy a telephone? So, my name is Natalie, um, also known as Miss Hatton. Um, born and raised in New York, I grew up in Queens. I went to school for uh, business management specializing in finance. Um, I never really imagined that I would want to make my career as an artist. It was kind of intimidating, a little scary, because when you think of the word artist, what comes along with that? And for me, it was like that phrase, struggling artist. And that's something that I was like really nervous about, never thought too much of, um, to make it a full-time career. Now, although my work never really inspired me, um, I was never passionate about it, for some reason when I would walk into this building, I would still feel inspired, mainly because this was my view. So um, before work, after work, sometimes during, um, I would meet up with photographers that I met on the internet, on Instagram, and we both would share a passion for photography. Um, and explore the city. We would, you know, do things like, <laughs> I don't even want to promote this, but uh, yeah, we would, you know, explore different rooftops and it was, it was amazing. I go to my coworker, I'm like, yo, I really want to see the pictures I took last night and I didn't bring my camera to work. Like, I'm so upset. And she's like, oh, don't worry, you'll see them later. And I'd sit at my desk and I would just get this anxiety. I'm like, no, like, I can't be here. I see it, I think I'm gonna quit. Like Natalie, like you haven't slept, like sleep it off, go home, and tomorrow if you feel the same way, then you know, do what you have to do. So I was like, no, that's the right thing to do, that's logical, smart. I'm gonna continue this work day, get home, and figure it out. Went back to my desk, and I just couldn't, I, I couldn't handle this, my emotions. I, it's like I knew that if I wouldn't do it now, I would never do it. So um, I took my chance and I resigned from my corporate job. iPhone, I started shooting at my office with my iPhone. And you know, even to this day, I'll post shots that I've taken with, that I've taken with my smartphone and it still gets even more popular than other shots I've taken. I know it's gonna sound a little cliche, but 
And even to this day, because sometimes you really want to give up, you have a bad day, you have an off day, never give up, keep trying, you never know. You could have the worst year, and one day, everything can change. Everything can change. So just don't stop, keep going, keep pushing, and just believe in yourself. where it gives it a dreamy look, a dreamy effect to your photos. Good morning, America. It's easy to judge people behind the camera or on screen. But before I interview other people, I wanted to find out how it is to be on camera. A trembling experience. So you have to know, New York was always a dream to me, which is, of course, nothing special, but it's also the city my grandfather always wanted to see. He was obsessed by a German pulp magazine called Jerry Cotton, which is about a FBI detective from New York doing basically stuff. So my grandfather always wanted to travel to New York to uh, find out if his imagination about the city matches reality. So we planned to travel in 2001, but of course you know the story. So the only memory I have of this trip is a 1,000 Deutschmark bill my grandparents gave me, but there's nothing left. So I have to do this right. Uh, hi, my name is Ali Khan. I'm from Kazakhstan. I came six months ago. It's my first time when I came to the US, United States. I have never been here. So New York is a big place, a big city, big opportunities. Um, I came with my parents. They also uh, my father was here, here uh, 20 years ago, but my mother, uh, she, she never been in the US, like me. And um, 
uh, basically one of the reasons why I came here is help to my parents uh, to um, to learn something and to help them play uh, ten years. The one of the problems when I uh, that I met here it's uh, language problems, uh, but it's okay after the time after like some practice. I can speak and uh, that's okay, so uh, there is one of the problems. The second problem is uh, currency, the prices. The prices everywhere is, uh, is very big. So after the time, like two months, three months, we learned something. Uh, we rent a house in a beautiful place. We met a lot of uh, guys from another uh, countries. We met the, the guys from our countries. And it's pretty good. Uh, and you know that when you came here, you understand the situation in uh, our country is very bad. Because you see the difference. You see the difference on the economic. You see the difference. The, the life, the everything. The biggest struggle uh, it's uh, to leave my nine to five, nine to six job, <laughs> and to leave uh, everything that I have uh, in my home country. I leave my friends, my girlfriend. Um, I leave my uh, everyday, uh, everyday. Um, uh, you know, where they drop, and uh, I change uh, everything. That's it. Every, the biggest struggle is uh, leave my job because I work in my home bank country for years. When I was a young guy, 19, 20 years old, uh, as my favorite uh, movie director, Guy Rich, I, I, I think that it's going to be good to make a movie director, but I have a lot of fears. Uh, but now I'm almost 30 years old, and I think that America have, is a city, is a country of big opportunities. Um, maybe I will change my direction my career to movie filmmaking uh, let's make it so, yeah Let's meet Barry. He's a songwriter and I asked him to finish my song I just wrote a few days ago in the office. My name's Barry, I'm uh, 38 years old, born and bred in New York, New York City. Was born in Manhattan, uh, lived in Brooklyn for 28 years of my life. Um, have been living upstate now for the past uh, three years, uh, literally by a lake, by the trees, by the animals, uh, have deer outside my house uh, every morning. So um, I still, hello, I still work in the city. Um, so it's a nice transition to have a little less hustle and bustle at night, but still, you know, be in the thick of it during the day. So basically, um, I'm trying to balance out my life now. So basically, when I was in college, um, I tried to be that guy who, you know, would walk around with a guitar, except I didn't know how to play a guitar. Um, tried to play the piano, had no musical talent in that. 
but any time a song would come on on the radio, I would instantly be able to make up my own lyrics. If someone was playing an original tune or an instrumental, I was able to come up、uh, with lyrics right, you know, right off the bat without even thinking about it. It was second nature. It was like breathing. So music became、um, pretty much my life force when I was in、uh, college.、Um, I was in a relationship. You know, when you're young at that age, every little thing makes a huge impact on your life. And you tend to exaggerate things, so I started writing songs. And、um, in my college, I met someone who worked at the radio station. And you know, we were just talking, and I was coming up with、uh, songs and all that. And they're like, "Wow, this is really good." I would write, write, write all the time. I talk a lot, but. As much as the words are coming out of my mouth, that's what's going on in my head too. So there's always something going on up there. Any situation that I see, you know, could translate into a song, music, sad, beautiful, love song, whatever it is, tragic. And I started writing, and、um, a couple people who I met started passing along some of my writing. They were just lyrics. They were just lyrics, and my name got around. And it's not something that I really wanted to go into for myself because I'm a very anxious person.、Um, it's gotten a bit better with age, but I always worried like, will I be able to support a family? Will I be able to do this? Will I be able to do that? And I was、um, studying for finance. I worked at、uh, Morgan Stanley. And you know, you think about oh, how much money you're gonna make, how much money you're gonna make, and you know, I wrote a bunch of songs.、Um, a bunch of them were recorded.、Uh, some of them very well known, used on TV shows, used on MTV,、um, you know, shows, credits, and all that. And I didn't like having my name out there. I wanted everything,、uh, you know, to be ghostwritten. A bunch of writers who, after everything, they weren't making any money. You know, it wasn't a sustainable thing for them. It fed their soul, but it didn't feed their stomachs at all. You know, so I had to make a difficult decision on what I wanted to do. But then, life got in the way. You start dating someone seriously. You start having to support a family. You have a child. Where do you make the time for this? Where you have to choose. Listen, am I happy just doing this, or am I going to be, you know, happier, you know, living a life of excess, you know, really throwing myself into there? And I had to make that decision, and I chose to give it up for a long. Long time. I believe that you know the choices you make. Every choice leads to you know another choice. I'm happy where I'm at now, but I could only wonder like what opportunities I might have、uh, been given if I would have really. Jumped in with both feet and pursued it to、uh, the most of my ability. And like, who knows? I could have been writing for Beyonce, who, you know, with my name on there. And um, um, I spoke to an attorney a couple months ago because I wanted to start doing music under my own name, well, not my own name, Barry Post, because no one could pronounce my last name as it is. And Um, I released a bunch of songs, but he goes, you know, I gave him the history, and he goes, "What about all these songs、um, you wrote beforehand? Like, do you get any publishing? Do you get any royalties? Any of that?" I go, "No, I ghost, I ghost written for all of them, and I was just paid what 
I wrote for them, and listen, some of these songs um, went, I believe one went double platinum. Um, a bunch of them, like I said, were used in movies, uh, TV shows, which are still in syndication, you know, repeats and all that. So I could have had money still rolling in. So in that, in those terms, yes, I regret it, but who knows where, who knows where it would have weighed out in terms of what I'm making now. I'm, I, I have a very stable job now where I make good money, where I can support my family, where my wife um, doesn't need to work that much. She works part-time and that's just her choice. So I wonder like how it would have worked out. Yes, so is there regret? Yes. It, the, sh the short answer, yes. The long answer is, you know, there, there's no one way to describe it. Yeah, sure, one was um, by an artist called uh, named Ryan Cabrera. Um, it was called I Will Remember You, and it was used um, as the last song on the TV show of Will and Grace before they um, did the reboot of it, which was a huge show uh, over here. Um, I did another uh, for a band called Quiet Drive, which was uh, quite popular. It was called Rise from the Ashes. And um, a couple for uh, Boys Like Girls, a lot of uh, pop punk bands that I've written for. That was kind of my uh, niche. To see her for the first time is the real thing. Something that will stay in your heart forever. It's a good moment to reflect on my impressions and feelings about this amazing city. From the first moment you arrive, you are a part of everything. This city invites you to be more than just a spectator. If you place your stuffed frog somewhere and take it seriously, everybody around you will take it seriously too. Here, you are never alone. Thank you, New York. I know you're waiting for me. If you look out beyond the Statue of Liberty, you might see the Verrazano Bridge in the distance. It's the longest suspension bridge in the United States. Just one more thing. Remember the mail at the beginning I sent to a real New Yorker? She runs a podcast and make a guess. Who's her guest today? Hi Sebastian, I'm here with Sebastian. This is kind of like a, I guess like a live episode a little bit. 